This video follows on in our Getting Started series with Design Start Cortex M for Xilinx FPGA. And this video is if you have ARM's Daplink board. Make sure that you've followed the steps in the earlier videos before you carry on with this one. So here we're going to show two things using ARM's Daplink board, which sits on top of the Xilinx board like this. First, we're going to see how to drag and drop software files onto the Daplink device in Windows so that you can quickly iterate updating the board with software changes. And second, we're going to show how to configure Carl for debug, and then we'll start a new debug session. Once you've done this, you can start debugging your own designs. So let's start by opening a software project in Kyle. Here we're going to open the default project that's included in the design start package. This is located in software, and then the folder for the processor and board, and in the folder build Kyle, we can find the project file here. So here we're going to make a change in the design in the banner message. So let's update the version number here from 2.11 to 2.12. Let's save the change, then click on the build button to compile and build the software files. Now we don't need to click build all here because in our earlier video, we've already compiled before and the build button just builds from the files that have changed. Then we see this output here showing that the new files have been created. So let's quickly check that the files have been created where we expect to see them. So in the same build Kyle directory that we were just in, there should be two quad SPI files, a .bin and .hex file that have just been created. So now we're ready to connect the two boards to the PC. You'll need to connect them using two separate USB cables. Make sure that the pin jumper on the Daplink board here is fitted on. When it's fitted, the UART for the baseboard, which is our FPGA, connects through the Daplink, as we'll see. If this is the first time you've used the Daplink board, you'll likely see a message like this. So we need to install ARM's Embed Windows Serial Port Driver from this URL. Select to download the latest driver and follow the installation instructions on the web page. When the driver has installed, we want to open a terminal session with the Daplink board. So find out the serial port number it's using and open a new terminal session. Now on the Daplink board, there is a white button labeled nReset here. And if you press that, it'll reset the Daplink and the processor. And we can see that on the baseboard output is the older 2.11 version. We haven't loaded the Daplink board with any software yet. So at this stage, we have the software compiled with the version number changed, and we have both boards connected with the Daplink UART showing in a terminal. Next, we want to update the board with the newer version of the software design, and the Daplink board gives us a new way of doing this. Because it appears as a drive in Windows Explorer, we can just drag and drop the new software file onto the Daplink board. So if we go back into the Build Kyle folder and drag and drop the new QSPI bin file that we just created onto the device, you'll see the red lights on the board flash like this. The drive will disappear in Windows Explorer, but then come back. The actual bin files don't show on the drive, but you'll know if it fails on the board, as a new file called fail.txt will appear here on the device. So this drag and drop method, which only works with the Daplink board, is another really quick and simple way of making fast software iterations. Having now uploaded new software to the Daplink board, we can test that it runs from this board. So first, if we open our Daplink terminal session, hit the N reset button on the Daplink board, we can see that the version number has gone up to 2.12, which is the latest version of the software we downloaded to the Daplink. So now let's look at how you need to configure Kyle for debug with the Daplink adapter. In your Kyle project, click on Flash, Configure Flash Tools. Then click on the Debug tab, and then from this drop down, select the CMSYS DAP Debugger, and then uncheck the Load Application at Startup box. Then click on Settings. From the drop down here, we want to select DAPLINK CMSYS DAP, and you should see this ARM CoreSight device available here. Then click on the Flash Download tab and untick Program and Verify. Finally, select Do Not Erase and then click OK and OK again. Now we've configured all of the settings in Kyle, we're ready to run a new debug session. 
So to do this, you click on the debug button here and then your debug session will start. When the Daplink board is communicating with Kyle and debug, you'll see a blue LED flashing like this and you're ready to start debugging. To end the debug session, click on the debug button again and you'll return to the normal editing view. So here we've shown two features of ARM's Daplink board. First we saw a quick method of drag and dropping new software files onto the device in Windows so you can quickly update the board with software changes. And then we saw how to configure Carl and set up a new debug session.